Uh, so here I am with our friend Stefan. He's the third solar e-biker, long distance solar e-biker to drop by Grin this summer, which is awesome and a testament to just how much the idea of solar e-bike touring is catching on. Uh, I had the delight of first meeting Stefan at the 28 train Sun Trip bike ride. Um, he had a setup then that was incredibly competitive. Stefan was like head to head for first place for much of the trip till he went on a, a bit of a wild detour in China. Um, and uh, he's no stranger to solar e-biking. That was his separate big trip. He'd done the Kazakhstan Sun Trip before that. And right now he's on an epic adventure of his own making. Uh, Stefan started off in Eastern Canada and Montreal a couple of weeks ago. Um, made his way down to Vancouver, is now heading south to San Francisco. Uh, he's going to continue this journey all the way down to South America with the goal of hitting uh, potentially Patagonia. So uh, we have Mark who is on his way north, uh, Stefan's on his way south, um, and the world is ripe with these uh, wonderful solar adventures. Um, so uh, during the 2018 Sun Trip ride, uh, Stefan had a bit of a meltdown in the in early lead up to that, completely melted the connectors linking his motor to the motor controller on one of the higher climbs. Uh, I came to the rescue with my repair kits, got his motor up and running. He promised me two beers and he's come four years later for delivery. So I pay my duties. He pays his dues. <laughs> Trustworthy man. If you need to call a favor for Stefan, he'll repay it down the road. So now we're going to do a walk through Stefan's bike build. It has some resemblances to Mark Havran's setup. Uh, not quite the level of uh, electronic automation, but a higher degree of solar power and is really ruggedly and well designed for comfort and long distance travels. As far as I know, he's had no problems in this first 6,000 kilometers to get here and in the many tens of thousands to come, we'll see what, uh, what he encounters. And so you're using the Grin Hub. On the Sun Trip, you had a Crystal Light motor. Yeah. Um, have you noticed any substantial difference in the two other than this one being lighter? This one is being is more lighter and is more faster too. So in this system, yeah. Uh, it's very much like Mark Havron as well, a front direct drive motor, the Grinnell axle being the lightest of the options in this kind of power class. Um, and uh, Stefan has a 12 pole magnet sensor on the crank, so it's able to run under pedal assist mode uh, bulk of the time, but he also has a throttle on the handlebar. Yeah. Um, tell us what your usage of throttle versus pedal sensing is on a trip of this magnitude. Uh, when, I start to, when I start to pedal, the sensor is active mm -hmm. and the power is coming but I have to pull the trigger a little bit to have more power to start. To start. Yeah, and after it's okay, I don't need to trigger more. Yeah, all right. Um, so tell us, how many watts of solar panel do you have at a nominal set? I've got two panels of uh, 250 watts each. Okay, so 500 watts nominal. And what were you seeing for actual recovery at the start of this trip versus right now? At the beginning, I've had mm, 450, wow. and now I've got only 300. And, uh, and are you supplementing this sun power with any built-in battery charges when you're staying overnight? Or are you being a purist in your adventures at this point? I'm a purist. Stakanovist, as you can say. <laughs> this man's a purist. Uh, respect there. So mechanically, I see, I'm guessing that's a roll-off hub under the saddles. Yeah. Um, and uh, again, I think that's the same thing Mark had as well. Uh, you can't get a more reliable multi-gear rear hub than that, so it's kind of a logical sense. Is it the same hub you used on the Sun Trip bike? Yeah. Okay. And so the how, Sun Trip before. And the one so. before. Okay. Yeah. So this has seen this has seen some some kilometers. Well, uh, how far do you estimate you've gone on the roll-off hub? Me, I've done around twenty thousand kilometers. 20, but when I bought it, it was also twenty. Okay. It's, uh, so it's done the circumference. It's done forty thousand. Yeah. Impressive. I hope it's, it's going to last till the end. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Um, and so your trailer is pretty cute. Uh, so this is all uh, carbon fiber. Yes. Um, and uh, and then the panel, I see that underneath here that you've got the means of tilting the panel um, by loosening a screw and then rotating it. Yeah. Um, but while you're riding, you're always keeping this horizontal. Yeah, when I ride, I, it's, it's uh, always flat. And I turn it, uh, turn it, this one just, just when I stop to just, catch more power. Just when you stop. And how often are you stopped? What does your daily routine look like? Uh, I stop uh, at midday only to eat or some time to make a... I stop to pee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> Fits that. You're a natural man. Yeah. Um, and so are you able to have all of your... So you, you basically got your entire material in here yeah, and then... Four bags. No, all inside here and it's two bags. The two other bags is for the batteries. Uh, so I understand you've got one of these on either side. Yes. Uh, each one's 48 volts. Do you know how many amp hours? Uh, 14. 14. 14. So you've got 28 amp hours in total. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you've got just under, uh, yeah. So that'd be about one and a half kilowatt hours. It's cool. It's good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> one and a half kilowatt hours. A lot more than, uh, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. So Stefan has a larger solar panel and a much larger battery than Mark. Um, and that's enabling you to average about how many kilometers per day so far? Average is uh, 200. Average that's is two. It's a cool day. That's a chill day. Um, and what was your average when we did this sun trip together back in 2018? Almost 300. Almost 300. That's not a cool day. That, no. That's a hot, long struggle. So at first I thought this was an interesting spout on his water bottle. Uh, and he said it was for beer. And I said, oh, it's like a, like a beer spun. He said, no, for no. a bear. <laughs> um, so uh, crossing Canada from a, a foreign country, I guess fear of bears might be a thing. We had a huge fear of dogs when we did our sun trip. Can you tell us a bit about what you've seen on the side of the road in terms of wildlife? I just have seen a uh, lynx oh, yeah. and uh, the mouse with big ears, wrong <laughs> ears. I don't know how to say it. Uh, have you had any days of pure sunlight all day long? Uh, just one day, one day. One day of pure sunlight. Welcome to Canada. Um, so one of the challenges that faces everyone building a solar bike is figuring out how they're going to mount and attach their panel structure, especially when you're doing a roof, uh, especially when you have a roof on a two-wheeled bike rather than a tricycle where you don't have the width to naturally support it. Um, so this whole mechanical contraption was built uh, with Stefan and Guillaume, who runs a company in France called Declec Eco, which is one of the largest purveyors of fully built up solar e-bikes in Europe. Um, and of course they have tons of experience in order to do this right. So we've seen a huge number of mechanical failures from people who've done their own DIY solar mounts from fatigue cracking, especially when they're using things out of aluminum. Uh, that actually happened on Stefan's first solar bike or the solar bike that went to China uh, where the main tube supporting the front half just sheared off right in the middle. Um, when you're on really long bumpy roads, that constant impacting and vibration can really put a wear and tear on these joints. Uh, in this case here, it's mounted with a, a custom machine bracket off the boom tube to support the base. Um, he's got two triangulating brackets to help support the tube itself, as well as these diagonal tensioners to give side to side stability to the panel. So these panels have quite a large surface area. So when you're riding or even just parked in the wind, that wind can produce quite a substantial vibration um, and side shaking and having that be as stiff as possible can be important to help reduce uh, constant fatigue points. Um, the panels themselves uh, come from Solar Move, the same company makes that trailer, um, and that trailer is custom built as a solar bike touring trailer and has overmolded mounting for the rear panels on it, uh, which is really quite nice. And then the panels themselves, every time you have flexible panels, you need a support structure. This was done with aluminum extrusions, um, and these extrusion profiles with the T-slots are an incredibly convenient building block for any custom fabrication because you can just cut them and bolt brackets and joints uh, and corner inserts. Uh, so the panels are supported by cross pieces underneath so that the panels don't vibrate too much. Um, each solar panel has its own MPPT charge controller. Um, those are both parallel connected to go into the charging port of the battery, all of which is being monitored by the cycle analyst. Um, and at the back end of the bike, um, these, uh, if you look up closely here, you can see they've custom fabricated an aluminum support structure that bolts onto the mounting eyelets that are meant for the rear rack but gives substantially more connection point in order to anchor the two posts going up to support the back end of the panels. Um, and overall, this uh, certainly looks like it's held up very well for the first portion of this journey. And uh, hopefully it will continue the tens of thousands of kilometers to come. Luckily, Stefan's profession is actually inspection of welding joints. So if anyone will have a good eye on when some metal might be at its point of failure, I think we can count on him catching it before a catastrophe. Um, so, yeah, overall, just a very impressively well-executed solar bike build and, uh, and a good example of what can be done with uh, a few weekends of labor and uh, a lot of fun. Uh... <laughs>